Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is PJ and you are watching or listening to Big Photo Boys. Uh, although this is, again, another Big Solo Boy edition. Kirk couldn't make it again this week, so I'm going to just soldier on. I want to make sure I get it out regardless. So here we are. It's been an interesting week or so in my life. We've been adjusting to our new life as parents. We've got uh, Ziggy with us now and he's almost two weeks old. Um, yeah, it's been a big shift in our house. The first week, we honestly did really, really well. He was sleeping well and feeding, and we just found a little bit of a rhythm. And then the last week, he has just been a little bit of a terror. He's decided to just, yeah, be a bit more sporadic with with the, the routine that we have. And instead of every three or four hours, he's sort of up every couple of hours. So, yeah, this is something that we're working on. Um... We have our moments, but overall, it has just been the most amazing and rewarding experience. And so far, we're loving being parents. And I'll leave it there um, because probably not everyone is interested in that sort of thing. This week, we're going to talk about Facebook Marketplace. I, being home, and I'm, you may be able to tell, but I'm in my new office. I've actually set up a new desk and my new workstation. And it's all looking good and feeling good. It's going to be a bit of an ongoing process. I imagine I'm going to be putting this room together for the next two months, three months, six months. I don't know. Um, it's going to be a forever evolving thing uh, because mainly because I, I didn't want to just um, rush in and just fill the space with things. I didn't want to just buy a bunch of stuff up front when I don't really know what I want to put in here yet. So at the moment, it's very minimal but I really am enjoying it. There's so much nice light in this room. It just feels good. And the fact that there's no clutter, there's no other, there's just no unnecessary things in this room. And um, it's just really conducive to a good, productive, creative uh, space and mindset. So in putting this new room together, I've been clearing out a bunch of old stuff and I've been spending a lot of time on Facebook Marketplace, um, mainly selling, but a little bit of buying as well. And I just wanted to share a few things. Uh, I think this is a pretty important um, aspect of the modern photographer. We're all not made of money. Um, we all can't afford to just go out and buy things brand new every single time, although there are benefits to that. Obviously, you can um, you know, there's a tax tax benefit to buying something from a shop. You get an invoice. Um, yeah, that can help reduce your taxable income. That's obviously a big benefit. Um, but the the marketplace thing has honestly exploded since Facebook took it on. Um, anyway, I've got this whole thing written down. Let's get right into it. Um, it's going to be sort of half reading, half talking, and just the stream of consciousness kind of thing. Um, But I've got a bunch of stuff written down. So excuse me if I spend a little bit of time um, going through that. um, And it's not the usual free-flowing conversation that I sort of have with Kurt because it's a little bit more difficult to just keep talking if you're in a room by yourself. So Marketplace has generally become one of the things that has kept me on Facebook all this time. It's one of Facebook's greatest strengths is being able to take like a core aspect of another product and just implement it into their channels as a feature. Like if you think of like stories from Snapchat or how, um, you know, Instagram uh, is doing reels now, like TikTok, um, you know, basically ripping off their format. Facebook is really clever in in doing that. They, they can basically just absorb, you know, they can just take the features from something else and... and um, make it better almost. I know when Instagram started doing stories, I quit Snapchat for good. And I hate to say it because, you know, I was on Snapchat and I enjoyed it and and it was their idea, but Instagram just did it better. And that's where all my friends and and all my followers were. So that's where I, that's where I stuck. Um, Anyway, so what I'm sort of getting at is Facebook has kind of killed, um, you know, Craigslist and Gumtree and the trading post because, well, that's where we all are still. And particularly the older generation, particularly my parents' generation, they spend so much time on Facebook. And um, not only is it where the, the time and attention of us all is, it's also a really interesting take on it because obviously Facebook gives it the 
social proof. You have to have an account. You have to have a Facebook profile to use Marketplace. And um, I understand not everyone does it truthfully and not everyone has their all their details on show and whatever, but um, quite often I've bought something off, let's say, a mutual friend and it's really easy to just hit someone up for a quick reference or if you are not sure about a person, you can just click on their profile and just you know, get a little bit of a vibe for them. If their profile has no pictures or it was made last week, you know, it's probably a scam. If they've been on Facebook for 10 years, you know, they've got photos of their family and dog and, you know, they might have a link to a website or something else that will back them up further. Um, that's gen- generally a pretty good sign that someone is legit. Um, yeah, it's... It solves an interesting problem and I think that is that the Gumtree or the Craigslist thing is it's just so easy for someone to be anonymous. It's so easy to just with any old email just sign up and um, you know you don't even have profile pictures on on those sort of platforms so you really could be dealing with anyone and it's just rife with, um, with scams. Not that Facebook Marketplace isn't but I think it's got more of the everyday man to sort of drown out the scammers. Okay, so I'm going to go through a quick sort of list of pros and cons, just things that are really good about Marketplace. So I'm coming at this obviously from like a photographer's perspective because being able to buy and sell gear um, locally and, you know, when I say locally, uh, I live down on the uh, Mornington Peninsula, but you know I'll I'll still travel all the way to the other side of town um, to pick something up if it's the right product. Um, but yeah, when I say locally, I guess I mean you know other people in the Melbourne region, and it's just so handy. And uh, anyway, I'll get into it now. So on the pro side of things, you can find like very specific things on marketplace that might not be in stores or <clears throat> maybe are discontinued or unavailable or <clears throat> someone has bought from overseas it's things that you probably can't get on amazon or from a camera retailer um so handy and also you can find things that you didn't even know that you wanted or needed um that can be a good or bad thing i suppose <clears throat> another pro is knowledge is your advantage here If you are a photographer and you know a lot about gear and lenses and equipment in general, if you go into a transaction like this and yeah, you've done your research and you know what you're looking at, it's a lot easier in my opinion to get a good deal and to make sure you don't get scammed because I think if you are buying something as a bit of a novice, someone can sort of fast talk you, they can tell you anything you want about a product and you kind of have to just either bluff or just take their word for it um in the last six months i've bought a couple of herman miller chairs on um, facebook marketplace and i've learned a lot of things i don't think i I got ripped off but i've learned a lot of things about these chairs and how to um how to negotiate what to look for Um, and i wish i had known that stuff going in if it was camera equipment i definitely would have but i wish i'd known what i know now about the chairs um, because that's a big advantage going into a transaction. Um, yeah, you can uh, you can pick, like you can organize delivery or pick up a lot quicker than you could with um, online shops. Obviously during the, the pandemic, um, in Australia at least, the postal service has been just shocking. Everything has been delayed. Um, I understand everyone's doing the best they can, but it's just too slow. Like if you order something, even just locally from your own city, it often will take a week to arrive. Um, yeah, that's a whole other thing. But at least with Marketplace, you can you can find someone locally, you can start a conversation and you can drive out immediately um, oftentimes, which is really helpful. You can also get rid of a bunch of unwanted stuff in your house. And it's actually mind-blowing to me what someone will pay for a lot of the things that we think of as junk. Um, You know, I've sold old MacBook chargers, like toys from my childhood, unwanted clothes. We sold like some rocks from our front garden when we moved in that we wanted to get rid of, you know, and just plastic tubs that were in the backyard. Um, 
it's amazing what someone else has use for. Um, and if you can be bothered and um, you have the time and energy to post that online and, and go through all that, you can, um, you know, just from stuff laying around your house, you can very easily make a couple hundred dollars without too much effort. Um, yeah, lastly, as a photographer, if we're buying and selling anything, not just photography gear, but I feel like we have a little bit more of an understanding on how to make something look good and how to present something to someone in the best way, which is really helpful because a lot of the stuff that you see on Marketplace, people are taking horrible photos at nighttime in a dark room with you know orange lighting or whatever, and it just makes our stuff stand up so much better um, you know, in the whole feed. It makes it just you know more eye catching you're more likely to pick something that a photographer has um photographed in my opinion so that's a real uh, benefit for us as, as photographers um cons obviously there are lunatics everywhere and so many people are just generally a hassle to deal with especially if you're selling cheaper things and there's this sort of phenomenon in like the marketing world and um, I don't know if there's a name for it, but basically like the bigger the client, you know, or the more expensive the product, the better the customer is going to be because, you know, if you're selling a product or service that's worth $2,000, the person that's coming to buy that generally has, let's say, a greater appreciation for that thing or they've done more research or they understand it better. Whereas if you're selling, you know, random bits and pieces for $10, $20, you know, $50, then Generally speaking, you're going to have a harder time because people are going to negotiate and dicker around with you and um, they're just not a high value clients. So um, yeah, especially if you're selling small things, it can be a real hassle. There's also a certain amount of trust involved and there's big potential for a transaction to go bad or be unsafe depending on who you are and where you are. I know the area that I live in is like not this not a super high socioeconomic area so we've had a bunch of lunatics come and buy stuff from us you know from um <laughs> when i say lunatics i say it affectionately then they're, they're not all bad just lots of different kooky characters you know like um you know we've had some real barky types come through um i'm, I'm hesitant to list too many other interesting um types of people I don't want to offend oh I sold a GoPro to a mermaid that was an interesting one literally a lady who has a bunch of mermaid tails and set up an Instagram as a mermaid and she wanted the GoPro to take underwater photos of her being a mermaid so that was a cool and interesting situation anyway um, it can be yeah it can be fun it can be interesting but it can also be a real hassle and I think particularly um, you know, if Gemma, my wife, is home alone and she has to do this stuff, I do worry sometimes about who's coming to the door. It depends who you are and where you are, but <clears throat> there is potential for something to go wrong there. Um, one other thing I wrote down was you don't always get the same respect that you give people. Um, in my opinion, there's sort of like a little bit of an unspoken code around a few different things. Um, if you someone has committed to buying something from you let's say and you know you've sort of made an agreement you shouldn't then turn around and sell it to someone who's given you a higher offer you know if you have that understanding with someone um several times have i bought something and then the person will just either delete the message and delete the delete the whole listing because they've sold it to someone else obviously for a higher price or you know i've basically gone um, a few months ago, I went to buy a Herman Miller chair and I was going to drive down to Geelong. And just as I was leaving, um, the guy said too late, he sold it already. And I had agreed with him to drive from my office in Moorabbin to Geelong. You know, that was probably an hour and a half drive, probably longer after work. I, you know, I was the first one to see this listing. I saw it like as soon as it went up, it was a great price, great product. I'd agreed to go and check out this thing and um, he sold it from right underneath me. I was so devastated. Um, so yeah, there's an unspoken law with a few things. Um, basically, it just comes down to be a good person, um, but not everyone cares. Um, what else have we got? 
um, yeah, you might have to travel a long way or, you know, you might have to be beholden to someone else's weird schedule if they're a seller. Um, and the last thing I had on the cons list was, in my opinion, about 75% of the inquiries that I get on my stuff is people trying to lowball or scam. Sometimes they don't even talk. They just message a number at you. Like, I'm selling something at the moment, Sennheiser Wireless Pack. I'm selling it for $400. Someone just messaged me last night. Nothing. They didn't write anything. I think they wrote, they just put 150 or something in the list. And I was just like, I'm just going to delete that. It's not even worth replying. Um, anyway, people are funny like that. And in my opinion, I, I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of people that just do this full time. You know, they don't have jobs. So they literally just cruise marketplace and buy and sell stuff. And on one hand, it's like cool that they can make that work. But on the other hand, it's like so stressful. And um, they're just not great people to deal with. A few general things that I just wanted to talk about because like I said, in the last week, I've had, I think I've sold four different things and I've bought a few different things as well. And um, just a few things that I've been thinking about that I wanted to add into this video. One really common thing on Facebook Marketplace is when you list something, let's say, let's say I'm selling a 24 to 70 um, lens and you list something and you have, you know, overnight you wake up to 10 different messages and they just say, there's like this automated message that Facebook puts where you can just click it and it will send it to that person. And it's just the laziest thing and people will just write, um, hi, is this still available? You can just click the button and it'll just shoot that off straight away. So literally some mornings I wake up and there's just like five, 10 messages, hi, is this still available? And most of the time, I'm going to say 95% of the time, you reply to that and you get nothing in return. So I don't know what they're, I don't know what people want, but um, I suppose my best tip, the best thing that I can say about this is try and keep the conversation going. Don't just say yes. Um, if you can, ask an open-ended question or just delay getting back to them. So for example, if someone says, hi, is this still available? I tend to say, um, are you interested in coming to have a look? Or, um, you know, you might even say something like, um, I have um, a few people interested already that I'm talking with, um, but it's not yet sold if you wanted to come down and check it out. Um, I don't advocate telling lies, um, but, you know, it's not, it's not the worst idea, um, particularly if that is the situation. And often it is. Often you'll have conversation open with a few different people just to let them know that you know time is of the essence and if you don't act soon then your chance is going to run out um that's one thing that i do and i think i do really well i'm really good in my opinion i'm really good at buying and selling on marketplace I, I try and make it a good experience um yeah so if you can play the field a little bit and help to create a little bit more of that scarcity i think that really helps um also, like I said, people will just often just hit you with an offer. Like let's say I'm selling a lens for let's say I'm selling a lens for two hundred and fifty dollars and they just they just write hundred and fifty dollars and one thing that I might do again to keep the conversation going and to also create that little bit of scarcity, I might say something like, um, Hi, I've already had an offer for two hundred and ten dollars. Um, if you can beat that it's yours or I might say something like I have someone already interested at $210, but they can't come until the weekend. Could you come sooner than that? And if you can, it's yours. I think that's a really good way to deal with someone lowballing you. And that way, you're not just being rude back, but they can see that they have way, you know, underpriced you and they know that you know that this item is of, of some value. Um, yeah. I'm sure I'll think of a few more as we go along, but that was just a couple of things that I had written down. Let's talk a little bit about how to be a good, how to be the best seller you can be. I'm forever shocked at how unrealistic people are when it comes to selling their things. If you pay $2,000 for something, again, let's just use a lens for an example. Let's let's use the 24 to 70. If you pay $2,000 for it and you own it for a couple of years, chances are no one's going to be buying it for $1,900 if they can get it for $2,000 new. Again, 
you buy it new, there's no um, there's no leap of faith in terms of trust. You know from a store, you know that it's legit, you know the condition is right, you know you get a warranty. $100 off is just not worth that. Oh, and it's a tax write-off as well. So, you know, you got to make it worth someone's while. If, if someone is going to um, purchase something secondhand, it has to be worth it. So let's say you buy something for... Let's say you buy something for two thousand dollars, and the retail price of that product drops to fifteen hundred dollars, as technology almost always does, quite quickly actually. So let's say I buy an A7 III for two thousand dollars, and then a couple of years later, or a year later, the recommended retail price drops to like fifteen hundred. It doesn't matter that I paid two thousand dollars. I'm not going to sell this camera for fifteen hundred dollars because the market is not at $1,500, right? So if the recommended retail is now $1,500, then probably the market value of secondhand camera is gonna be like, let's say 20% below that. So what's that, $1,200 or something? So yeah, be realistic. Just because you pay $2,000 or $3,000 or something, doesn't mean you can still get that money back because things depreciate, not just from use, but things depreciate um, just over time. Um, particularly technology, digital technology. Um, yeah, it really, it, uh, to sum it up, it doesn't matter what you paid. It only matters what the market value is. And I find the best way to do this is just to type in that product on Marketplace or, or Gumtree um, and also type it in on Google. So to see what the cheapest locally available version of that product is, um, the most similar that you can you can find, what's the cheapest you can get it for new, and then have a look at what the going rate is on Marketplace. Um, so let's talk about pricing a little bit more. I see sort of two main tactics that you should use in terms of pricing your, your valuable items. <clears throat> First of all, if you value your time and energy, which I do a lot, and that's why I try and sell things as quickly and efficiently as possible on Marketplace, don't try and squeeze every dollar out of a transaction. Like unless you really need the money and your time is less valuable than money, it's just honestly not worth it. Some people try and negotiate, um, you know, depending depending on what you're selling, you might have like, let's say between five and like 20 inquiries. Um, if, if it takes a few days to sell the lens, it's not unusual to have like 20 different people messaging messaging you. Um, to me, thinking about the time and energy it costs for me to negotiate and reply and, you know, basically man the inbox and wait for people to, you know, send send through their, their offers, it's just not worth it. Like it's not worth getting an extra $10 or even, you know, $50 or $100 depending on how expensive the thing you're selling is. If you can just like think about 20 inquiries, if it takes you know, 10 minutes of your time and 10 minutes of, of active energy and, and, and willpower to go through those and negotiate with that person. That's just like, that's so much time wasted. It's just not worth the $50 or $100. Um, so, oh, and beyond that, it's not worth upsetting someone and having someone leave a bad piece of feedback on your seller rating because that could affect all of your transactions in the future. Anyway, I'll move it along. So basically what I do is I try and find what's the cheapest I can get it for for new locally. Gray market doesn't count. Overseas doesn't count. Or what is the same or a similar item going for in a similar condition. Um, and then I'll try and price it 10 to 15% under because like I said, time is valuable and who wants to be mucking around with the lunatics on Facebook Marketplace? So for me, I like to price it just a little bit under and I have a special talent. <laughs> I can usually sell things and get them picked up in the same day if I'm serious about it. And um, I mean, the benefit of this is if you underprice something just a little bit, it's not that you're trying to undercut the market and you know screw over the other buyers. It's just that if you can create this little you know artificial demand, if you can make people fight over your listing, then you can kind of dictate the term. So like. Let's say I put up the lens. It's worth it's worth two thousand. Like, well, let's say fifteen hundred is the market value. I might sell it at 
1350 let's say and if every other listing is for 1450 1500 if i put it up with some really good photos a really good brief summary nice description location no postage um, you know, I, I get it all right. Chances are within the next half an hour, the offers are going to start to come in. The offers are going to start to come in. And the good thing about this is if a lot of people are offering you, you know, early on in the process, you can really dictate the terms. You can say, again, you can say, I've got, you know, four other people interested. Could you come today? I don't think it'll last that long. And, you know, someone might try and offer you more money and often I will just reject that out of hand. I'm not trying to have a, you know, what do they call it, a Dutch auction here. But if I can get someone to pick it up same day, all the better. Get it out, get the cash and move on with your life. That That's how I feel about it anyway. Um, obviously, I, I mentioned this a little bit before, but to, taking, great photo, taking great photos sounds really obvious, but... Just think about what you would want to see about the product. So again, let's use the lens as an example. You would want to see the the, the badges. You know, you would want to see the G Master badge on the lens. You want to see the little focal length writing. You want to see both elements. You want to know that it comes with the hood and the caps and you've got the box and you want to let someone know if you have the receipt as well so you can prove where it came from. Like all these things, basically just think about, think about what someone might ask you about the product or what you might ask someone else and just try and preempt that like don't make them ask and don't just don't make it harder than it has to be the less steps someone has to take to deciding that they're going to go with you that they're going to pull the trigger and give you your money the better and the quicker and the easier it's going to be the other thing with the photos is you really want to you want to try and sell the sizzle not the steak you want to sell the dream of owning that lens um, and I guess this comes a little bit with the description as well. You might say something in the description like um, the 24 to 70 is the, it's the most versatile lens you can have as a photographer. If I only had one lens in my bag, this would be it. And every professional needs to own one. Basically, what you're saying is it's not, it's not just about, you're not selling the dream of owning the lens. You're selling the dream of what the lens could do for that person and for their photography and for their reputation. You're selling, selling the prestige of, um, not prestige, you're selling the you're selling the concept that this lens is going to be the solution to a bunch of problems for this person, which it probably is, but you just need to plant that seed. Um, so yeah, with the photos as well, you might wanna, you might wanna, um, had some photos, some great photos that you've taken with that lens. I know um, for the many, many times that I've sold equipment to amateur photographers, I've always put my some of my favorite and some of my best images up with the listing of the camera because, again, you're selling the dream of it's not about, you know, the fun part is not owning this camera. The fun part is, oh, my God, look at how good those photos that this camera has made. And if I have this camera, I can make photos like that. It's a funny little... Um, you know, selling psychology trick, but I think it's probably the most important one. What else have I got here? So photos, um, try and take them in daylight as well. Make sure um, everything is clear and legible. It is unbelievable if you scroll through the marketplace feed, how many people take photos inside at nighttime with orange lighting or um, the other thing that drives me crazy Boomers always take a photo and then they post a screenshot of the photo and it's just so cringe and it makes you look like a scammer. So yeah, you want to put your suburb and your postcode. Um, leave it there. Definitely don't put your address in that. Um, I always, I pretty much always say pick up only because again, time is money and if you have to spend half an hour you know, packing something up, writing an address, um, going to office works to get bubble wrap, and then you have to take it to the post office and send it off and get tracking and then take a photo and send them the tracking. That's like half an hour to an hour of my time and it's just not worth it. Most things that you're selling, it's just not worth it, especially for lower value items. But then again, for high value items, do you really want to be shipping a $2,000 lens? Because there's just so many 
ways that something can go wrong between you and them. And um, it's just not worth it. If you do have to ship something, if you absolutely do have to ship something, then make sure you get tracking and insurance as well. And the buyer can pay for that. Um, Yeah. I always, uh, just on that quickly, I always, um, I prefer cash. Cash is always best and easiest. And there's the, the less, you know, the less that can go wrong, the better with buying and selling from strangers. But if you do, if you absolutely do have to post something or take a payment remotely, I will always ask for a bank transfer because PayPal, while it seems safe, PayPal will always protect the buyer and all they have to do is click a button, send a quick message and PayPal will rip the money away from you and they will give it back to the buyer until you can prove otherwise that you've done the right thing and uh, it's just not good for the seller and then you have to work out how to get the money out of paypal into a bank account which is a whole other story isn't it last thing i'll say there is for pickup if you have someone coming to collect from you don't give your address until the absolute last minute it's a safety thing, but it's also, I think it's just the less information you can give them, the more you can kind of keep them hanging on a little bit. Um, in that regard, I think the more likely someone is to follow through because if you give it, if you give them everything up front, maybe this is just, maybe that's not true. Maybe that's just how I think. Um, but I will nine times out of 10 say to someone, Um, Just give me half an hour's notice when you're heading down or let me know just before you leave and I'll send you the address. I'll send you the exact address. Up until then, I might just tell them the street that I'm in, the street and the suburb, then they can work out how far it is. And then when they're on the way, I'll I'll tell them the number of the house and then they can rock up at the right time when I know they're supposed to come. Because several times I've had someone rock up way too early I'm not home from work yet or Jem's home here. She doesn't know anything about the product that I'm selling. She doesn't know, yeah, how to negotiate. She doesn't know what they're going to say and it's just bad for everyone. Um, So yeah, don't give your address until the last minute so they come on time and when you're ready for them. I'm going to finish off with how to be a good buyer and this is, there's, in my opinion, a little bit more to this than it seems um it's mostly common sense obviously it's mostly common sense but here are a few things that um, i pride myself on in being a really good buyer so first of all make it easy on the seller don't make them run around like yes it can be their fault if they haven't taken great pictures or there's extra stuff that you need to see you shouldn't be afraid to you know ask to see a serial number or a receipt or something like that to verify who they are. And if they're a serious seller, they're not going to mind selling you that stuff. If they have a lot of people, you know, arguing over the same product, chances are they're just going to skip you. They're going to sell it to someone else who's less of a hassle. But in general, try and make it as easy as you can on the seller. Number two, don't just message someone a price or don't just message that default message hi is this still available treat people like people use the seller's name as a communication hi daniel um i saw that you have this lens um how long have you had it for or um hi daniel uh is it possible for me to come and have a look at the lens um tomorrow afternoon after work um yeah i it's such a small thing but if you can If you can relate to them more on a human level, then I feel like they'll have more empathy for you and the transaction will just go better. It's nice. It's nice to leave somewhere not feeling like you've done a drug deal or a scam. You know, you don't want to be selling something to someone and then you have to get out of there straight away in case they find out something about the product or in case there was some awkward thing and it's left a bad taste in both of your mouth. Try and make friends with the person. It's not that hard. You only have to Talk to them for five minutes and then you'll never see them again, hopefully. Um, Yeah. Here's a big one. If you see something that's up 
for what you know to be a good product. Sorry, let me say that again. If you see something that you, it's a product that you're really familiar with that you know it to be a good price, just go for it. Don't punish the seller and try and squeeze them for that little bit more. Again, it's just not worth the time and hassle and to save another 20 bucks or whatever, like the seller will appreciate it. And if you are just straight to the point and and honest and upfront, then chances are they're probably gonna give you priority over the other buyers because you're not just trying to like scrape and you know, just suck every last dollar out of them. Um, it's just not worth it. And you feel better afterwards. If you both leave a transaction happy, if you know it's a good price and You know, that's what they've asked. They're happy with that price. You're happy. Just like both walk away happy. That's how it should be every single time. Um, What else? If you do want to negotiate, you have to be, you have to do it the right way. Um, I can't even tell you how many people have just approached this the wrong way and I just delete the message straight away. I can't be bothered. Or I just say, no, thank you. And then delete it. Um, If you do want to negotiate, um, Again, it really helps if you had good, if you have good knowledge of the product. If you know what it is, you know what you want, you know the market value, you know what you can get it for. New. That's all things that are on, you know, in your corner when it comes to negotiating. So you might say things like, um, if you see a price that you think is worth trying to haggle down a little bit, you might contact them and say. Hi, Daniel. Um, I'm really interested in your lens. It's a little bit more than I wanted to pay. Um, Is there any room to negotiate on this? Or, uh, hi, Daniel. I'm interested in your lens. Are you firm on the price? Or is there any flexibility there? Something like that. Some other things that I wrote down that can be um, really handy, some like little scripts that you could use is something like, um, I'm coming from quite a long way. Would you accept X amount of dollars to make it worth my while. For example, if I was traveling from Melbourne to Geelong, you know, that's probably a quarter of a tank of petrol, if not more, going there and back, maybe half a tank of petrol. Um, you know, if it's, if it's, uh, if they're not dying to get, well, if, then, if there's not a, a million people lining up to take it straight away, you could say, hey, you know, I'm coming from a long way. Would you knock off $40 to make it worth my while? And um, if they really want to sell, I'm sure they'd be happy to do that. Or you could say, look, I can get this product new for like 20% more and then I have an invoice for tax time. Could you come down in price a little bit? Something like that, super reasonable, logical, and um, I don't think anyone's going to be upset by that. Lastly, um, if there's something that you really want but you can't make it in a few days and you don't think it's going to be available in a few days' time, um, if you if the seller looks trustworthy and you're comfortable, it's not a bad idea to put down a deposit or you know, if it's not a high value item, you know, if it's 40 bucks, $50, why not just pay up front? And that way you can relax for the next couple of days and then on the weekend, when you have some time, head down, pick up the item. They're happy, you're happy, everyone wins. I think that's about it. That took a lot longer than I expected. Um, I hope that's been useful and interesting. I've spent, like I said, a lot of time in the last week on Marketplace and, you know, I've bought an bought and sold um, probably, I don't know, eleven or $1,200 worth of, uh, worth of bits and pieces. And I reckon I'm really good at it. Um, I mean, part of the reason that I think that I'm really good at selling things is I suppose outside of Marketplace, I'll try and sell it to a friend first. And I'm happy to be a little bit cheaper for a friend because like I've sort of mentioned throughout, time is valuable and it's just so exhausting to deal with strangers and the general public and it's just such it's such luck of the draw um yeah sometimes it's just not worth it uh but yeah in the last week i sort of realized that it doesn't always have to be hard i had a couple of really good experiences so i thought i i should put this down quickly all right i'm losing my voice i better be better get back to my wife and uh, beautiful baby boy thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed it if you did leave me a thumbs up thoughtful comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.